Okay, and that'll do it for the um, the third video that we watched. Um, so let's see, we've we watched one, two, three. We're halfway done. So the question was, what does Paul mean when he says not to let anyone judge us in regard to keeping the Sabbath? And I'm sure that most of you watching this YouTube video or listening to this uh, podcast have probably heard at one point in time a sermon from a pastor or a Bible study group where most often the 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 angle that's being pushed is that we Gentile Christians in the church should not let anyone outside of us judge us for the things that we're not doing. So again, typically this is described as uh, Christian Gentiles feeling like they're being judged for not keeping Torah. So it's no secret by now that many Messianics are kind of vocal in the way they describe their Torah keeping. Hey, we should be keeping Torah. Hey, we should be keeping Sabbath. We should be keeping kosher. We should be keeping the Passover. All of these things. And and then sooner or later, that message, we should be keeping Torah, you know, drifts over into Christian circles, Bible studies, uh, seminary, seminaries, uh, church Sunday morning services, things like that. And so um, your average Gentile Christian starts to feel this kind of this, I don't know if it's a little bit of pressure or conviction or confusion. You know, those, those Messianic people are saying that we should be keeping Torah. You know, on the one hand, I, I read the Bible and I'm thinking, okay, that kind of makes sense. But on the other hand, I feel a little bit of a judgment. I mean, because after all, they say that, you know, they seem to be saying that God doesn't love you as much as he loves us if you're not keeping these things. So, you know, what does that make of us Gentile Christians? And so, they, you know, they go to their pastor and ask him, hey, you know, these Messianics I read online or, or you know, went to their synagogue once, and they said that I should be keeping Torah even though I'm a Gentile, but, you know, what do I do? And the pastor says, hey, let me tell you what Paul has to say. Paul says, don't let anyone judge you regarding keeping Sabbath. Right? You don't have to keep the Sabbath. Don't let anyone judge you for not keeping it. Those are just shadows. The, the reality is in, in, in Jesus. So don't worry about not keeping those things. So that's the way it's usually spun. But historically, that doesn't seem to match with what would have taken place in Paul's day. And so that's why I put my commentary here the way that I did. There, I know there's another way we could look at this passage, but I don't want to mention it just now. So first, what I'd like to do is, um, those of you with me in the live class, if you've got any questions or comments on this on this topic, um, now's your chance. Let me know. What do you guys think about the topic? About what, what's your perspective on, or I could ask you, have you ever felt judged by a Messianic? Most of you, I assume, are actually kind of already Messianic, but before you were, did you feel like those Messianics were judging you? And if you did, then did you go to your pastor and what did he tell you? That type of thing. So, uh, talk to me. Wow, silence again. Okay, I'm beginning to wonder, is this thing working? <laughs> is, did Skype cut out on me? I hope it didn't. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, all of you are just so engaged in the topic that you uh, just want to hear what's going on. Um, so maybe if you have comments later on, uh, again, at the very end of the, of the whole study, after we watched all six videos, um, I'll again open up the microphone and, and give you opportunity to uh, talk about any of the topics that we've discussed thus far. But right now, I'm hearing that, or I'm not hearing anything, so I'm guessing that no one wants to, to uh, engage at this moment. That, to me, is the light to go forward to the next video. So let's keep going then. All right. Uh, next question. What does the Bible say about Christian liberty? We already know that one of the central themes of Passover is freedom. And I talked about it earlier, about it's the paradigm for our own personal uh uh, deliverance from Egypt. Even if you're not Jewish, you have to agree that if you're a Christian, then the Passover story should be important at the level that you uh, would identify with the Jewish people who were in bondage under the Pharaoh and needed to be set free by the blood of the Lamb that uh, that day. So, at the very least, you would. I, I'm hoping you would draw a connection between that aspect of the story.